Hi everyone, I'm Rinsey and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I am back to do a new release Tuesday video. Today I'm talking about books that are coming out on Tuesday, October 8th. First, I have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Galaxy Alex Stern is the most unlikely member of Yale's freshman class. Raised in Los Angeles by a hippie mom, Alex dropped out of school early and fell into the world of shady drug dealer boyfriends, dead-end jobs, and much, much worse. In fact, by age 20, she's the sole survivor of a horrific, unsolved multiple homicide. Some say she's thrown her life away. But at her hospital bed, Alex is given a second chance, a completely free ride to this prestigious university. What's the catch and why her? Still searching for answers, Alex arrives in New Haven, tasked by her mysterious benefactors to keep an eye on Yale's secret societies. Their eight windowless tombs are the well-known haunt of the rich and powerful. But their occult activities are more sinister and extraordinary than any paranoid imagination could conceive. They tamper with forbidden magic, they raise the dead, and they sometimes prey on the living. So Ninth House is this new book from Lee Bardugo that I know a lot of people are really excited about. It's one that sounds super interesting to me. I'm someone who enjoys these sort of Ivy League set books, especially when they have this mysterious element thrown into it. So it's definitely one that I have on my list to check out. And again, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo is out today. Next, I have our sponsor for this video, and that is Holiday House, who are the publishers of Just In Case You Want To Fly by Julie Fogliano and illustrated by Christian Robinson. Funny and sweet, told with sweet lyrical text along with unexpected colorful illustrations. Just In Case You Want To Fly celebrates going on new adventures and knowing that your family has always got your back. Joyful children fly, sing, and wish their way across the pages with everything that they need. A cherry if you need a snack, and if you get an itch on your back, here's a scratch to explore the world. Christian Robinson's bold illustrations bring humor and warmth to the story, teasing out new meanings from the prose and providing these delightful illustrations that'll keep you turning the pages. These two are an award-winning team and together they wrote When It's My Birthday. And this book was inspired by Julie's daughter who, while she was packing for a trip, kept giving her things to put in her suitcase in case she wanted to do anything. So again, if you have a little one in your life or you have someone that you want to buy a book for, this one sounds really, really great. And again, that's just in case you want to fly and that is out today. And thanks so much to Holiday House for sponsoring this video. Next, I have How We Fight For Our Lives by Saeed Jones and this is a new memoir. This is kind of a coming of age memoir where Saeed Jones is talking about being a black gay man in the south and trying to carve out a space for himself within his family, within his country, within his own hopes and dreams. Through a series of vignettes that chart a course across America's landscape, Jones draws readers into his boyhood and adolescence, into the tumultuous relationships with his families, into passing flings, and each piece about his own life builds into this larger narrative about race and queerness, power and vulnerability, power and grief. Saeed Jones is also an award-winning poet and I've heard that the writing in this memoir is really beautiful. So if you are someone who really enjoys memoirs, I definitely think that this is one that should be on your list. And again, that's called How We Fight for Our Lives. Next, I have How Rory Thorne Destroyed the Multiverse by Kay Easton. Rory Thorne is a princess with 13 fairy blessings the most important of which is to see through flattery and platitudes. As the eldest daughter, she always imagined that she would inherit her father's throne and rule over the interplanetary thorn consortium. Then her father is assassinated, her mother gives birth to a son, and Rory is betrothed to a prince in a distant world. When Rory arrives in her new home, she uncovers a treacherous plot to unseat her newly betrothed and usurp the throne. With only her wits and a small team of allies, Rory must fight against this regent and rescue the prince. So this is the first book in a duology which reimagines fairy tale tropes within the genre of space opera stories. Um, and it's being pitched as the Princess Bride meets Princess Leia, which is pretty fantastic. So if you are someone who enjoys those sort of feminist retellings of fairy tales and things like that, I definitely think this is one that you would enjoy. And again, that's how Rory Throne destroyed the multiverse. Next, I have another retelling for you guys, and that is Orpheus Girl by Bryn Rebel Henry. 
abandoned by the single mother that she never knew, 16-year-old Rhea, who is obsessed with ancient myths, lives with her grandmother in a small conservative town in Texas. For years, Rhea fought to hide her feelings for her best friend, Sarah. When the two are outed, they are sent to Friendly Saviors, which is a re-education camp that is meant to fix them. Upon arrival, Rhea vows to assume the role of Orpheus to return to the mortal world with her love. And after she and Sarah and the other teens who are at this camp are subject to abuse and brutal treatments by the staff, Araya becomes even more determined to make this done. All right, so this is kind of a loose retelling. Obviously, it is playing with the Orpheus myth, and but it also tackles this like really dark and difficult subject matter. Um, there is content warnings included on this for scenes depicting self-harm, homophobia, transphobia, and violence against LGBTQ characters, so just a forewarning for that. But this also seems like a book that is like very much worth reading if possible. Uh, so again, that's Orpheus Girl and that is out today. Next, I have The Girl Who Reads on the Metro by Christine Ferre Fleury. I probably messed that up. I apologize. I can't do French. Juliet leads a perfectly ordinary life in Paris, working a slow office job, dating a string of not quite right men, and fighting off melancholy. The only bright spots to her day are riding the metro across the city and imagining stories for the people that she sees reading on the metro. One morning, avoiding the office for as long as she can, Juliet finds herself on a new block in front of a rusty gate being held open by a book. Unable to resist, Juliet walks through into the bizarre and enchanting life of Solomon and his younger daughter, Zadie. Before she realizes entirely what has happened, Juliet has agreed to become a passeur. Solomon's names for the booksellers that he hires to take stacks of used books out of his store and into the world, using their imagination and intuition to match books to their readers. Suddenly, Juliet's daydreaming becomes a reality. And when Solomon asks her to move into their store while he's away to watch over Zadie, she has to decide if she's really ready to throw herself into this new life. So this is a book that is being described as perfect for fans of Amelie and the Little Paris Bookshop. It sounds really delightful and full of a lot of heart, which, you know, is just everything that you need in a book sometimes. So if that sounds of interest to you, then I definitely recommend picking up The Girl Who Reads on the Metro. And the final book I have for this week is Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts. Tuesday Mooney is a loner. She keeps to herself, begrudgingly socializes, and spends a significant amount of time watching old episodes of Twin Peaks and X-Files on DVD. But when Vincent Price, Boston's eccentric billionaire, dies, leaving behind an epic treasure hunt through the city with clues inspired by his favorite Edgar Allan Poe, Tuesday's adventure finally begins. Puzzle-loving Tuesday searches for clue after clue with a ragtag gang. A wisecracking friend, an adoring teen neighbor, and a handsome and cagey young heir. Price's clues can't be solved by sharp wit alone. The searchers must summon the courage to face painful ghosts from their past and discover their most guarded desires and dreams. So this sounds like a super interesting book to me. Uh, I love these like sort of mystery books that have a bit of a puzzle element to it. So if you are someone who enjoys a good treasure hunt story, then I feel like this is a perfect one to pick up. And again, that's called Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts. So those are all the books I have for you guys this week. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys plan on picking up, whether it's one of these or another one coming out today that you are super excited about. Otherwise, I will see you guys again next Tuesday with another new release video. Bye.